Welcome back, listeners. Um, we are now joined by some students that participated in Senior Survivor. Um, we're really excited to have with us Taylor Newsted and Ryan Lane. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Um, if you guys want to start, just tell us about um, your your role in this process real quick, if you wanted to start, Taylor. Um, yeah, my name's Taylor Newsted. I was one of the 16 survivors selected to compete in the event this year. Um, we apply through like an application process that is written and a video, and then we fundraise for about a month and a half to two months, and then we get our date that we get to move into the school, move in, do a whole bunch of competitions and activities, and continue to fundraise through the week, and then we find out um, how much money we raised and who is the ultimate survivor um, that Friday. So Awesome. And Ryan? So I, again, was one of the 16 survivors, um, and I made it until Wednesday, so didn't make it as far as Taylor did, but I tried to make sure that I was still involved with everything as soon as I was nominated off. It just it felt really important to me. We had grown so close together as everybody's, or as people, so I wanted to make sure that everybody had the support that they needed. Awesome. So before we started the show today, I was talking um, with Taylor and Ryan and just letting them know that I am completely unfamiliar with this process, um, being newer to the community. And um, so I'm really excited to learn more about it today and for you guys to share your experience with our listeners. So um, you mentioned an application process. Can you tell us a little bit about that and how it works? Yeah. So how the application process works is about two months or about a month before everybody's picked, we will get a uh, email with a written form that you have to fill out and there's questions like um, why you would make a good survivor, um, how you're doing in school, what kind of traits you have that would allow you to succeed in this competition, and there's a couple more. And then there's also a video application, so you can only have about a minute worth of video, three minutes worth of video, sorry. Mm -hmm. um, where you're explaining exactly the same thing, um, who you are, what your team name is, uh, why you would make a good survivor, what the park means to you, and there's people do it in different ways. So like mine was more serious, but there was a quite a few applicants that did it more as like a funny. So okay. they're they're trying to like level off or figure out what would be the best route to take to get voted on. Is there anything that you wanted to add to that, Taylor? Not really. I think um, the ones that are a little bit goofier, you do have like like transitions for each of them um, to like the survivor talking on why they would be um, the like next ultimate survivor. So everybody does have a serious part to their application, sharing um, why it's important to them. So I'm going to ask you both a little bit about your why and why it was important to you. But before I do that, I'm I'm curious who is on the um, the committee or the review board that would select the the final 16. Is that right? Yes. Okay. So we have each of our class advisors are on the panel, and then our leadership um, teacher is also on the panel, and then a few of the teachers, I'm sure, weigh in um, and stuff like that, but mainly our class advisors. Awesome. So who wants to share their why first? Go ahead. Okay, go. <laughs> All right. So my why was, uh, I, I'm the third child, so I've always grown up watching this, and none of my other brothers competed, but they wanted to and it was just something that I've always wanted to do. And then when I learned what the charity was this year, they were building the all-inclusive park. Um, it was something really personal to me. My oldest brother has high-functioning autism, so growing up, he's nine years older than I am, so mm -hmm. I didn't experience most of it, but like, part of my childhood was always, um, he would get like overstimulated so we would have to kind of change and reroute and there were certain things that I had to learn that other people didn't necessarily know about because it was normal for me and it was normal for him but it wasn't normal for other families. Yeah. So I think I, I would just had this idea that having this park would be really interesting because more people would learn at a young age the skills that I did. Yeah, that's, that is, um, I can understand now why you're why, and it was so, so meaningful and heartfelt for you, absolutely, and that's, that's a wonderful why, so thank you for sharing that with us. And how about you, Taylor? Um, so my mom is a speech and language um, pathologist in Howell, and she just kind of always taught me um, that we don't see people who have disabilities as anything less than ourselves, and to always talk in person first and things like that, and so when I was in fifth grade, I, like, worked in the, um, the 
like special ed classrooms during my lunches and stuff like that like once or twice a week and I loved it and then when I got into high school we had this ties program which is teaching interacting and encouraging students and you like get partnered in a classroom or with an individual student and just kind of show them like the right ways to do work and how to act in the classroom and just kind of be a buddy to them and so I've had that connection with kids with special needs and when I learned that we were doing a park I was like this is amazing I love that it's like in Howell and that we get to like see the construction and see it actually impact our community because usually um, for a survivor we like pick a charity and then we write a check and just kind of send it away and then this year it just it's more close to home and we'll get to see the impact that it makes on the community and I think that's really special because all of us work so hard and to be able to get all of our money turn it in and then see what it actually does for the community will be really special yes I agree and I think that is so exciting so um awesome thank you for sharing your why with us um, the playground, so we talked a little bit about this um, with Mrs. Brady, uh, that about what it will look like, but how do you guys get to participate in that? We, <laughs> as of right now, we really don't know. What we're all kind of hoping for is that we get to be there at the beginning and the end. I think that was a common consensus that we all had. Mm -hmm. um, however, we, we don't know. We know that they're at least gonna start building it this year. Yeah. Okay. But that's that's as far as we've heard as of right now. Awesome. Yeah, so we actually didn't know if we would be able to raise enough money um, for it to be like a one-year thing or a two-year thing, just because it is so expensive to build this park and all the different things that we want. And then the more money you raise, obviously the more aspects of the or that you can have at the park. So raising as much as we did was kind of like mind-blowing to all of us, I think, um, which is also, I don't think we will need a crazy amount more um, to actually see a good amount of our playground get yeah. put in. So Awesome, that's exciting. Well, we um, are looking forward to just kind of keeping a pulse on this whole process and hopefully uh, maybe we can have you guys back as guests at mm -hmm. some point to talk a little bit about um, your involvement and, and what it comes to be. So um, can you tell us about the fundraising then and all of the different things that you did to raise money? We'll go first. Okay. <laughs> so, um, the fundraising process, there's always a month after you get the amazing letter that you're part of the senior survivors. Um, there's immediately a meeting as to how to get sponsorships. So we get this nice packet and we went around to businesses and just asked if they would sponsor us. So some businesses were like, okay, that's awesome, just wrote a check. You know, it was a weird year, so a lot of businesses weren't able to do anything. Mm -hmm. And then there was a couple businesses that did some interesting things. So like for me, I work at USA To Go Car Wash, and what my, uh, my company did is they said, okay, if you donate all of your tips in this designated time, what we'll do is we'll match your tips. So then I got double the money and we were able to promote it and make this big, huge ordeal out of it. So other companies do that. Past the fundraising, you get to the week of, and you're not allowed to sell anything the week of except for your senior survivor shirt order forms. The week of senior survivor, you can sell merchandise, you can sell food, you, we could sell pretty much anything, and we always wanted to make sure it was for a profit, but always cheap enough that high school students would buy it. Awesome. Yeah. So during the week of, it's like, we call it Survivor Village, and usually it's inside this year, it was outside, but everybody gets like a pop-up, like tailgate tent and tables, and you like sell like crazy, and it's <laughs> packed, and everybody's selling different stuff, and everybody has megaphones, and you're like screaming what you have, and like competing with like the tables across from you, and it's just like filled in like the like courthouse of our school when you walk up, and it, it is like nothing else like you've ever seen high school kids do. <laughs> That's awesome. Um, really great experience too. Mm -hmm. So if you guys ever want to, you know, come work at the chamber, just let me know. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, what were some of the challenges during the week that you experienced? Um, so, what did we do when we first got there? Like on Sunday. Oh, we we. Uh... Is that a dance challenge? No, the, it was the runway challenge. Okay, so we have junior survivors that we get paired with at all of the middle schools and they have to apply as well and they have a whole separate panel of teachers that helps pick them and then they get paired with us so they came in sunday night and we did like some fun little games with them 
and then we did like a um, paper runway so we had like the post like the paper that you would put on like a bulletin board um, and you had to like create an outfit out of that and then we had a runway and you had to like give a little speech for them um, that was our first night and then we had we had like a dance challenge we had to like choreograph a dance to a song that you picked out we had a nailed it like the show on Netflix um, <laughs> We had to like make a cake and it was judged on like presentation and taste. We had um, Mario, Kart. Mario Kart, like an in-person Mario Kart. We had, oh, we had like a puzzle. We had to like find like a little riddle and like find clues and build a puzzle. <laughs> that one wasn't fun. I was gonna say, that one looks like it was challenging. But I won, I won that one. Yeah. She won it, I did very terribly. The, that day, it was Tuesday, um, we didn't have school because we had SIT makeup. So we had this challenge in the middle of the day where it was two hours and we each got a square and we just danced for two hours and it was live streamed and people were oh my electronically sent yes. money. Yes. So we were like all dead tired and then we get to the reward challenge and they look at us and go, okay, now you get to sprint. And we were, we were um, Taylor won and I <laughs> did not. Um, yeah, we also had trivia. Every year there's trivia. Um, this year, it was interesting. It was specific. But there were specific, specific numbers and... Yep. You have to know so the amount raised, the, who won. With the challenges then, it's people, it's all in an effort to fundraise, right? Yep, so for yeah. the challenges at night, so we start them like at 7 o'clock at night, our student council comes in and runs them. We have no idea what the challenges are until they read us the rules. And then we have two or two challenges each night. The first one is usually um, a reward challenge. So. We have sometimes we like donations to our buckets, air mattresses. They'll go and grab us like fast food or go to VG's for us or something like that. Um, phone time sometimes. And then we have a second one for immunity. And then if you win that challenge, you don't have to turn in any money for the next day and you're automatically safe and you get to the following okay. day. Yes. Awesome. Yes. Well, that is very cool. We are, we have just a little bit of time left. Mm -hmm. um, is there anything else that either one of you would want to share about your experience? Um, it's, we have, we film video, or our film crew takes videos of us throughout the week and each day there's a new video and I just want to say that like it's so much more than what anybody could see through the videos, like how close we get. So we get all of our phones taken, he's taken, like you can't leave. So we're all just very present with each other because after the school day ends, that's all the people that you have to hang out with. So, I mean, we like razor scooter through the whole school and we would just like, eat snacks together and hang out and watch movies on our laptops and stuff like that and you just grow so close with the people that you're working with and you all have the same goal um to raise a crazy amount of money but you don't know so it's just like it's competition but you're like just the best of friends and you get so close to each other and it's really the most amazing experience that anybody could ever have I'm so glad that I did it me too awesome Ryan, we do have to wrap up, but I just, I think, I want to thank you both so much for everything that you've done, um, for coming in today and sharing your experience, and I um, really am excited to see what is in store next for you guys. Thank awesome. you. Thank you so much.